Hey guys, King of Trimax here, and today I bring to you the best raw charge blade builds. This guide is for charge blade raw builds. I will provide multiple options for different equipment skills. And just an important note, Amped Elemental Discharge, or AED, and Super Amped Elemental Discharge, which I call Sade, isn't affected by affinity. So, if you try to increase your affinity, it doesn't matter because Amped Elemental Discharge and Super Amped Elemental Discharge don't apply to it. So, there's no point in building crit, especially if your biggest hitters aren't going to crit anyways. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright, for the first build, we have the Offensive Builds. First off, we have Offensive Guard Level 5 Charge Blade Build. This maxes out Offensive Guard at Level 5, giving you a whooping 40% attack bonus for 10 seconds after executing a well-timed guard. For those that don't know, it's actually pretty easy to do this if you're able to get your guard points in, as well as if you hold guard while your sword is glowing. Rothian Van Blazes give you Burst Level 2 and Lock On, always a nice damage, especially since we're going raw here, and Lock On is always nice. Heartbreaker level 1, Heroics level 1, and Defense Boost level 1 are a bonus. So those are nice little things you don't really need. Well, but again, having Defense Boost is kind of nice, especially if you're trying to proc Offensive Guard using perfect guard skills. Just be careful what you guard against because this build doesn't use guard or anything like this. If you don't happen to proc the right timing, you're going to end up getting punished for it. So just be careful. All right, next up we have the Offensive Guard Level 5 Charge Blade Build Offense 2. So this is the second build for the Charge Blade Offense. This max out Offensive Guard at level 5, and the build has lock-on thanks to the Black Diablo's Coil. Now here's an important note. This build should only be used if you plan on using Heroics Level 4. As you see right here, you have Heroics Level 4. If you use the Diablo's Charge Blade, you can get Heroics at level 5. And again, this should only be used if you're planning on using Heroics, because you can Offensive Guard, proc Heroics, and then now you're just going to smash anything in front of you. So unless you're going to proc Heroics, like I mentioned again, because your HP needs to drop to 29% or lower, don't use this build. This is literally a Hail Mary, full of face, I'm going to smash you type of build. Alright, so for my Offensive Charge Blade build number 3, we have Burst Level 3 and Slugger Level 3. Burst level 3 gives you a good boost with lock-on, so this is actually the build I'm using right now. Slugger level 3 gives you extra stun power, and quick work level 2 allows you to be aggressive with axe transformations. I love this build because I'm able to quickly get into either my guard points, or I'm just able to quickly go into Sayd or AED and just blast things, and if the st stun happens, which... Here's a reminder, if you stun a monster, it's after the attack animation ends. They are wide open for a super amped elemental discharge. Partbreaker 1 level 1 and Heroics level 1 are a bonus. The rest don't really matter, you don't really care about poison resistance. But I really like this build just because of the variety and the stun power it gives. Slugger 2 is fine, but 3 along with Burst 3 and Quick Work 2 are just a really sweet combination and I'm able to just really aggressively go after monsters using this build. It does focus more on dodging rather than guarding, but with all the stun and the attack power you get from this, it's pretty sweet. Alright, next up for the fourth offensive build we have for the Charge Blade, it's the Burst Level 4 Slugger Level 2 Charge Blade build. There's lots of power and stun ability with this build. It has Burst 4 and Slugger 3, so this build leans more towards using Axe Mode to do heavy damage and stun ability. So you're, uh, my buddy actually uses this one. He kind of foregoes the shield outside of charging it, and then he just lets it rip with Axe Mode. Lock On, Heroics Level 1, and Part Breaker Level 1 are also nice bonuses. So this is a very aggressive one, but outside of charging your Axe, you're not really going to use your shield much with this build. All right, next up we have a balanced charge blade build. You have guard level three and offensive guard level three charge blade build. So guard level three is the optimal guard level and with offensive guard level three, it gives you a nice complement for each other and burst level two gives extra damage boosts. This build also has lock on and part breaker level one as a bonus. So the reason why this is balanced, you have guard level three and you have offensive guard three. So you get two attack boosts additive and you have something that procs with guard at the same time. So it's pretty cool. This build will allow you to be both offensive and defensive and allows you to use your shield very effectively. But, again, this isn't a very aggressive build. This is kind of like half and half. You get the best of both worlds using this balanced charge blade build. Alright, so if you don't like offense, we have defense. This is the guard level 3 charge blade build, our first defensive build. 
Guard level 3 is the optimal level, but this build maxes your defensive stance. So the reason why is because you have quick work level 2, and it allows you to quickly load your shield, and power prolonger level 2 allows you to stay there for longer. Now, it slightly only increases the duration of the powered up state by charge blade, so we don't know how good it is, but the reason why we have it is because it's Koro Puke Puke, and if it lets you stay in the duration of power up for your powered up shield, if you use a lot, then it's actually pretty interesting to use and see and play around. It also has lock on and rising tide for extra bonuses, but just keep in mind you need the Coral Puke Puke mail at grade 8 if you want rising tide. So this can be a very expensive build if you decide to use it or if you decide to use the Coral Puke Puke armor in general. Last but not least we have a slugger level 3 and guard level 3 charge blade build. This is the second defensive build and again guard level 3 is the optimal level of defense for the charge blade. Slugger level 3 gives you stun power and when your shield is powered up with a successful guard. So if you successfully guard when your shield is powered up it will do stun damage to the monster. So this combines your slugger ability with that stun ability. So it's really cool if you like transforming with guard points etc and you like stunning the monster just so that you could wreak havoc on it, this build is for you. It also gives lock on, defense boost, of, defensive boost level 1, heroics level 1, and part breaker level 1 are bonuses for this build. In closing, here's an additional note. The Black Diablo's Charge Blade, Thanatos Force, is perfect for Charge Blade because of AED Amplified Elemental Discharge and Sade Super Amplified Elemental Discharge not being affected by Affinity. In fact, I kind of knew that already, so I built the Black Diablo's Blade already. I mean, considering I killed 1,000 of them, 1,000 slain, that video is still coming out soon. But yeah, it was pretty... It's I have a lot of Diablo's materials. So, with that being said, hopefully these builds give you an idea of what to run with raw charge blades. There's a lot of options here, and hopefully these options kind of open the doors for what you feel like your personal preference is for running a raw charge blade build. And with that being said, please do me a favor. Like, oh, please do me a huge favor, actually. Like, subscribe, and comment for the YouTube algorithm. I'd really appreciate it. Good luck on your grinds, and I will see y'all on the next video.